What up? You haven't seen me since, I guess, the last time you looked at me. Yep. Alrighty then. Uh, another video. Same day, another video. Uh, okay, well, I found some more, uh, you know, I've been wanting to do this for so long that <clears throat> uh, I really didn't uh, know or didn't think about it until I stumbled across the vinyl community on YouTube. Um, then it's like, wow, you know, there's so many people out there that are obsessed and, and collect and, you know, live for, for music and for records and so on. And um, I just want to say that uh, I have a lot of uh, newer metal, like really hard hardcore metal. Uh, I don't have really what I would consider that on vinyl because it's so expensive, most of it. Uh, I have that on CD or, you know, I've downloaded it. Most of it's on CD. I would love to have a lot more of that on vinyl, death metal, black metal, uh, all that kind of stuff. Because I, that's, I'm more of a metal type of guy, which I guess, you know, like I said, I like all kinds of music, but the metal thing is always there. Anywho, here's some old records. Let me, let me tell you a joke. Uh, it, the the let me spell it out w r e c k a s t o w what's that say or what's that spell let me ask you a question if you want to buy a sam cook album where would you go to the record store <laughs> That was on uh, Under the Cherry Moon. Prince told that joke. So there. Okay, shut up. Here's the records. This one is... Uh, all of these records are ones that I got at one specific thrift store, and apparently they were all one person's collection. And there was tons of records there, and I bought tons of records um, at, I think, two or three different trips. I loaded up buddy. So here's the one that I got. I've never seen it up to that point. Grand Funk Railroad Born to Die. And there they are all laid out. And it has uh, some flower arrangements here on the back. And it has, it has the cutout. It's over on this side. And uh, there's the uh, Mark Farner and Gang right there and uh, you might hear them back there in the in the fog whatever and this I was really surprised to see because I have some of these on 78 and like one of those old books it's like collect 78 to 45s and 8 tracks and all that and uh, I'd seen this and it was in this collection, which the collection was quite varied. And this is uh, Emma Sumac. Uh, Legend of the Sun Virgin. Right there. And you know, it doesn't get any better than that. Anyone out there that doesn't know who Emma Sumac is, um, she's been around for a long time. And to my knowledge, she's still alive. Uh, not recording, I don't think. Um, her music is like a, it's like a, a mambo, uh, like a lounge, what they, you know, the revival, lounge revival, it was clumped into that. It's also considered cool and strange. Uh, she has a ridiculous octave range on her voice, and some of the songs I think is a made-up language, and uh, it's great. I have her Mambo album too, which is my favorite. I'm gonna have a few on CD. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, she rocks. 
And then this is uh, some classic Christian rock, Petra. More power to you. And it sort of looks like a Boston album by the artwork there. And the uh, story about this record, when I was in uh, middle school, uh, my music teacher at the time, I'm assuming she was a Christian lady, she had uh, a copy of this on cassette laying on her desk. And um, I guess one day it had come up missing. Some kid or whatever had stolen it off her desk and she was furious about it. She went on about it for a while. I mean, come on, still right off her desk, you know. So um, I uh, have a lot of Christian rock and uh, with the uh, inverted cross there on my wall, I say that. Uh, uh, but I have uh, a lot of Christian rock. I've seen Petra in concert, actually, uh, like later Petra. Not this. This came out in I think it was '83. So let me double check that. So I'm not positive if I'm. I want to be right. '82. Well, that was close. Uh, it has some great songs on it. I know a lot of people. Christian rock isn't their cup of tea. Um, and it's not their uh, mug of beer either. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, uh. I notice I say that a lot. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and, uh, here's another Christian rock band, Resurrection Band. Looks like a couple Medusas there going, doing some uh, posing. There, I see, I said it again, and, uh, this band sort of sounds like, uh, while well, it was later shortened into just Rez, or Rez band, they have two singers, a male and a female, and, uh, the music is really, it's pretty, the earlier stuff I like better, but most bands, the earlier stuff I like better, and it's usually, most people out there would agree that the earlier stuff of most bands is usually the best stuff. Why that is? Don't know. Can't tell. Um, this album's good and I have a couple of their uh, cassettes I think. And the last one I'm going to go over for this round is uh, this I had on 8-track and I might still have it on 8-track. Uh, and I also bought it, I found it on CD at Media Play in Columbus. Uh, if anyone remembers Media Play, they went out of business not too long ago. And Oh man, a lot of the old, um, well a lot of just record stores and the chain, the big chains, you know, Tower Records, Virgin Mega Stores, a lot of those have just really closed up and went away. Coconuts, uh, Renaissance Music, Peaches. Uh, I don't know if those were all local or Armadillo Records. What else? There's, there's so many that Blockbuster Music even had... Uh, it, you know, I would see them closing one at a time. It's like, no, all this stuff is going away. But what can you do? You just have to look elsewhere. Just, so anyway, I, as a kid, I had a very limited supply of records and 8-tracks. So you just played what you had over and over and over. So you really got to know them quite well. And this is a band called Coliseum. And this is a live double album. And it's it's sort of, anybody out there that might know more about it than I do, um, it's sort of a, a mixture, to me, it sounds like a garage rock and um, like the Krautrock mixed. To me that's what it sounds like. Uh, there's a lot of instrumentation, a lot of guitar jamming. Uh, I'd also, as a kid, uh, someone had referred to it as acid rock, which I didn't know what that was at the time, but obviously I do now. But I don't, I don't do that. Um, but I do listen to Coliseum. Um, 
and the the lead vocalist is uh, a cross between uh, Louis Armstrong and uh, someone that's not Louis Armstrong. Those two guys. Uh, but this is a gay fold. Let's see what's inside, shall we? It's got some cool pictures right up in there. Yes, it does. Look at that, will ya? And it's on the record label. It's the same Warner Brothers, the same label as Black Sabbath. Hmm. So anyway, maybe that's why I like it. Maybe not. But it's funny, I actually had this on 8-track before I had any Black Sabbath on vinyl or whatever. So there's my records for this video. And I hope you enjoy. I hope you comment and, and uh, enjoy and listen and play and buy records. Look through records, buy records. Think about records, dream about records. I know I do. I do, I actually dream. I actually dream about records that don't exist. I dreamed one time I was in the record store and I dreamed about a Twisted Sister record that I wanted really bad in my dream. It didn't exist in real life. Needless to say, I don't have that record. Whatever. Alrighty then, comment. And we'll see ya.